Um, hello, everybody. My name is Peyton Counts. I'm the cultural healing coordinator here for Boys Fort. I'm originally from Turtle Mountain, um, but I've lived on the Boys Fort Reservation now for a couple of years. So um, I brought for our event tonight, I invited Terry. He's going to do um, some drum teachings and do some uh, moccasin games, talk about Anishinaabe games and stuff like that. Um, we do have some upcoming events in a couple of weeks. And I wanted to say that I did create a YouTube page for us and I'm going to be working on probably creating like a Facebook page or something so that we can get more information out about the events we host. And like when we record these events, like right now with Terry, um, I'll post that on our uh, YouTube page. So if you guys want to refer back to it, you guys can go to that. It's uh, Boys Fort uh, Traditional Healing Program is what the YouTube page is called. And so right now I have three videos on there. So we did one with Linda Eagle speaker. We did one with Karen Drift on how to ask for your Indian name. And then we did another one with Sharon Day on water walks and like offering like water advocacy and stuff like that. And so those are up on our YouTube page now. This one will be up after this is this event's complete. And um, whenever we continue to host events, whether they're like on Zoom or in person, I'll try to post um, that information on our YouTube page as well. So for people who want to go back to it or people who aren't able to physically be at the events and stuff like that, they'll be able to get that knowledge and participate in that sort of way. So I'm excited about that. And um, I think that's it. If you guys have any questions, you guys can always reach out to me, email, um, phone, once I create this page. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I know it's been a weird week. So uh, and maybe a long day, it's Thursday. So Thank you guys for sharing your evening with us. And I will let Terry introduce himself and we will go from there. We will be on the call for about an hour. So we'll wrap up around seven. If you guys at any point need to take breaks, water, you know, the bathroom, anything, take care of yourselves. Of course, always do that. If you have questions, you can write them in the chat or um, ask towards the end of the call. All right, go ahead, take it away, Terry. Bonjour, Lanin. Hey, uh, Terry, in addition cause. The main endodem, Onamini Jagai Gun, Nindunjba, Nish, Noyola, Nanen Matana, Ni Bibunikis. Hello, my name is Terry Goodsky. I, I'm the uh, Sturgeon Clan. I come from Lake Vermilion, which is actually Boys Fort, you know. Uh, I just said I'm 50 years old, gonna turn 51 next month. Yay! All right, hey, I'm here to tell you just a little bit about drum etiquette. Uh, the role the drum plays in the Ojibwe culture. And in my hand right now, I have a hand drum, which is actually came from uh, the spirits and made it through portages to the Ojibwe people in dreams. So yeah, I'm just gonna basically break down a, a song. Uh, you know, just, uh, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is a flag song. It was made for my brother, uh, Harvey Goodsky. It's a U.S. Army flag song, and I'm going to break it. I'm just going to sing like a half a push-up, and then uh, I'm going to explain the song and to break down the song in general. So <clears throat> around the drum group, there's a lead singer. There's a lead beater. Everybody has a role in the drum. Uh, the lead singer is the one that sets the tone of the song. And uh, so I'm going to, this particular song has kind of a, a long lead and then the second and then the you know it's gonna it, it has that dakota drop beat to it so i'm just gonna sing just maybe a half a push-up and then i'm gonna get to the meaning of the song what it was who it was made for what it was made for the the types the parts of the song okay so all right let's start off here i'm not gonna sing it too loud so i'm just gonna have some fun here okay Wait, <laughs> 
basically just half a push-up uh the song uh let me break down a song here you had the lead and then if i had other singers with me what on a drum or even hand drums they would be they would sing that part that i led and they would do what they call the second so and then we'd all keep beat with the same drum the same beat with that dakota drop beat that dunk 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 and then we would sing that part. Then on the second half of the song, we'd sing it again. Then we would put in check beats, you know, and it's like. And we would put it anywhere between four to six check beats or honor beats as they'd call them. <clears throat> and then we'd, uh, <clears throat> that would signify guy that would that would mean that, you know, it kind of ready for another push up. And either the lead singer would do the lead again, and then the guys would second it. It doesn't always have to be the lead singer that does the, you know, the leading. He could hand it off to another person, you know, just point, point of the finger or, you know, the nod, the nod, you know. And uh, that way we would do that. We would do that song anywhere between like four to six times. It, the reason why we do it anywhere between four to six times is that it's a flag song. And when they're raising the flags or even lowering the flags, we'd have to sing until all the flags are raised. You know, some people wouldn't, you know, they would kind of wait for the first push up to go through. Then in the second push up, then they'd start raising the flags. Or some of you would even wait for like the second push up. Then it'd slowly raise the flags. Or, and then when they'd bring them down, <clears throat> You know they'd have to fold all the flags a certain way from from the family members that served in the military uh i'm honored to have my dad's flag and my grandpa's flag his dad's flag i have both of those so i'm honored to i'm not a veteran but i i do hold those flags and uh i try to take care of them the best i can uh because my grandpa my grandpa served in the united states army and my father, Harold Goodsky, served in the U.S. Navy. So I, and for reasons under my control, I, I couldn't serve. I was too rough as a kid and I had too many surgeries and I couldn't serve. But I do my best to try to honor those, those flags that I have with that song that was made for my brother. And in 2006, that was uh, made by Virgil Mountain. <clears throat> he goes by actually Virgil Blacklands now. And, uh, he gave us that song. That's that's our family song. So, you know, it's basically given to the family, which is me, my nephew, Little Harv, uh, my uh, my nephew, Brian Stilley Jr., Devin, uh, and we're, you know, and plus the guys from Lake Vermilion, you know, and uh, guys from Burnside Lake guys from <laughs> that was given to the family and, and I have a very big family, very big drum family. And uh you know guys from Burnside Lake, Lake Vermilion, Northern Wind, uh Boys Fort singers, uh guys that sit around the Boys Fort traditional drum, Gagi Gay Kwe. Uh I'm related to guys on the drift drum, the strong drum. <clears throat> and I do my best to carry myself well now that you know, I, I do my best to carry myself the best way I, I know how. And uh, I try not to, you know, uh, I try not to use drugs or alcohol around the drum now. Uh, when I was younger, I, I did. and But now that I've been clean and sober for so many years, 20 years, and, uh, my voice still is, can still get up there for a while after almost over 30 years of singing. But as I said before, that song was given to us in 2006 for, uh, for my brother Harvey. And uh and we always try to honor honor him by singing that song with that with that particular song, and uh, 
now everybody sings it you know even if they're not family they'll still sing it because that that's the way songs should be should be shared you know not because it's it's a it's a bad song or a good song or a, a, a really it, it makes people feel really good and that's the legacy that my my brother left that he was a really good singer and he got to travel a lot of different places and uh he got to bring me a couple places too and uh I, I, I every time I get I I try to sing that song wherever I go just just to honor the people and uh I I you know I my drum teachings have always been you know try to go to the drum uh clean and sober you know not high not drunk not hungover uh, it wasn't always like that but you know I've decided to really clean up my act if I'm going to be a a, a role model, as they say, or a positive role model. Uh, so I, I, I sing that song with pride. And it was given to our family, the Good Sky family, which just extends to everybody basically on Boys Ford and Black LaCroix and other other parts in Canada. And even uh, we have family in Grand Portage too. But we're the ones that usually sing that song. And that's, you know, <clears throat> me, Harv or Brian you know, that are leading it, or even sometimes our adopted nephews, you know, uh, that, that hard light. We sing that song, they sing that song too. And, and, and sometimes it's, it's forgotten, you know, but they, I, once in a while I go to Apollo and somebody else will be singing it and I'm like, okay, well, that's what that song is meant for. That song is, that song is meant just to have fun. And song is just to be sung, you know, and that's what I found out that every other song you know, that we've sang over the years that we started singing, you know, as, as Lake Vermilion when we first started out. And uh, we'd go places and, you know, sing as a young group and we'd just have fun. And, uh, <laughs> and I do remember a couple of times, even nowadays, you know, within the last 10 years, you know, uh, when I first started singing, I started, you know, meeting other different groups and singing with them. And I found myself in Red Lake one time. I was singing with the Cast Lake singers and my friend Buffalo, Will, Willie. And uh, he was like, Terry, let's sing this, this one song. And I, and I tried to go with the original teachings. Like, you know, when you, when you sing a song, at least know who, who made it, and know what it's, what it's made for, you know? So I was like, I don't know that song, dude. I don't, I don't feel comfortable singing that. And he goes, well, let's sing it anyways. And the, the rest of the guys were like, yeah, you know, sorry, right, let's do that. So we sang it and we just got done singing. And next thing you know, an elder came up and he goes, hey, he goes, Who, whose song is that? And we were all looking at each other and looking dumb, basically. And uh, we were like, uh, we don't know. It, it just, you know, it was a nice song. And we decided to sing it. And uh, the elder, you know, he pulled up a chair and he gave us, put tobacco on her drum and then he gave us an ear beating <laughs> you know you get you know it's like that that's my song that's that's a family song he goes we only sing that you know to honor people and and for honor song and memorial song and that's the first time I ever got yelled at for for the for singing a song they're singing a song like that and not knowing where it came from and it wasn't the first time I ever got yelled at for singing a song uh but Another time when, uh, even in that lake, we're uh, Lake Vermilion, we're practicing our sidesteps. This was a long time ago. And <laughs> we got yelled at too. You know, uh, me, Butts, Jer, uh, Bill, Arch, uh, everybody, Dan Lightfeather, Junebug, you know, you guys know who you are. All the Lake Vermilion guys, everybody knows who Lake Vermilion is. So I'm not gonna name drop. But we were singing sidesteps during supper break and uh, <clears throat> we got yelled at by Uncle Gene. You know, that's one thing I can say about uh, Uncle Gene, good guy, my uncle. He come up and yelled at us and uh, uh, and it feels good, you know, to, he comes up and he goes, hey, you guys aren't supposed to sing those songs here. And we all started looking at each other like, oh man, we're gonna get ear beating. And he pulled up a chair and he talked to us and he goes, he goes, before you guys sing those songs, he goes, you guys should give the dancers some tobacco so they come out and dance. And uh, she said, okay, well, next time, you know, we'll, we'll you know, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do that. You know, we'll think about, we'll think about doing that. 
So, you know, but nowadays, you know, it's weird because everybody practices their, their sidesteps, you know, everybody practices that, you know, that, that sidestep beat that. That sidestep beat that, that's originally for those songs, those jingle dress songs. And uh, <clears throat> everybody practices that separate break now. But when we did it, many, 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 oh, that's a lot of many. So we did that like many years ago. We got yelled at for it, you know. And e even now, as, as we get older, you know, I, I still get yelled at. <laughs> it, it's great, though. But, you know, it's that's how we learn things. You know, we, we went to Eagle Butte, South Dakota one time. And uh, it was a Veterans Day power. And I was I went with Buffalo Horse. And all the guys from Buffalo Horse, Verge, Vin, Bud, uh, Damien, uh, Bud Loading Eagle, uh, uh, let's see, Tony, uh, Bill, uh, all you guys know who you are. I'm not going to say all you guys' names, you know. Uh, but yeah, we went there and we, we sang a, a song, one of the songs of the 38 Dakota that were hanged in my hung in Mankato and one of those songs we brought over from Minnesota in the South Dakota and you know we got them singing we thought we did a good job you know we, th we thought we, we thought we you know was like yeah that was cool you know we, we honored the 38 over there the next thing you know an elder comes up and he goes he goes who's your lead singer and we just you know all pointed to our lead singer and he he goes next time he goes when we do these songs he goes you sing a, a you sing because you, you sing a real you sing a real veteran song i was like uh and then our, our lead singer was like yeah that's one of the songs for one of the 38 uh plus two dakota and he goes well that's over in minnesota he goes over here he goes you sing a real you sing a real Dak veteran song or else you sing a straight song and we were like oh man we're 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 all in our like 30s and 40s and we're still still getting yelled at, but it's always good to know where a song comes from and what it's for and, and who made it and what it, what it's made for. And uh, but yeah, that's, that's just one of the you know the many times that I've traveled and uh, got yelled at, <laughs> you know. And to, but it's 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 a good way, you know. This is this is how we learn things, you know. We make mistakes in life, and <clears throat> I'm glad you don't. Know, we, we have elders, well, not anymore, but, you know, Gene would, would always, you know, encourage us guys to, you know, when we started singing as like Vermillion, you know, to encourage us to keep going and sing. And we always did that, you know. We always weren't angels, but, you know, we, we've always tried to conduct ourselves the best way we can. It's kind of hard to, you know, to kind of talk about it, you know, she it's, it's, it's just passed the other day and, but yeah, it's one of our, one of our teachers that that you know that, that liked us when we sang, and I was you know come you know harassed us a little bit and made us feel good that you know we were still young guys and we were still sitting around the drum. That's another thing about drum etiquette, you know. Uh, we consider our drums living beings, and you know at Powell's it's it's really hard, you know, as as when we receive every teachings that we never leave a drum alone, you know. And I've been to Powell's where I've, some people have left their drums out in the rain even. And, but the next day that drum was totally ruined because nobody was, the lead singer took off somewhere. I don't know where he went, but he left his drum sitting there. And, <clears throat> and there's a teaching behind that, that if you leave your drum uh, sitting there and somebody comes up and whistles that, that drum and nobody responds to it by, by, by starting a song, you know, they can, they can take your drum. You know, and, it, and it's embarrassing, you know, it's, it's embarrassing. So you never leave your drum by itself. You know, you always have a singer sitting by, you know, you could be on his phone, you know, or whatever, watching a movie, but he's always there by the drum. You know? And uh, nowadays you go some places and you see the drum just, you know, just sitting here by itself. And I was like, wow, okay. And putting a blanket on it doesn't count. You know, I hate to say this, but putting a blanket over a drum doesn't count as watching it, you know even for a supper break that doesn't count you know turning it on its side doesn't count I was supposed Harry, to some... somebody asked um do people actually take the drums when that happens 
Yeah, I've actually seen one time where somebody actually took a drum. The whistle man came up and he, he saw that that drum was sitting there by itself. So we whistled it like four times and there was nobody around, no singers around it. So it was his right as a whistle carrier. He just picked up the drum and hauled it away and took it away. And the guys had to, you know, pay a little something to, to get it back, give him some tobacco and some gifts. And then it, they got a ear beating. <laughs> but it's, it's, it, it's in it. You know, I don't say, you know, an ear beating, you know, it, I, I, that's what I, I call it over the years on, you know, we're, we're, or talk to but in a good respectful way it's, it's an ear beating i still get an ear beating now and then you know from my elders but yeah i've seen i've seen people take drums and they'd have to give them you know some gifts some tobacco some blankets and uh and it looks really you know and when you see that it's just like wow you know how how is that our you know we're taught never to leave our drums there alone and they're they're never supposed to be sitting there by themselves you know you, you wouldn't leave your your grandma or your grandpa you know and uh sitting there by itself you know especially on a hot day or even rain you know uh, so but yeah another thing you know i i always go back to my to some of my teachings i don't always follow them all the time you know if it's a hot day you know i'll i'll wear trunks i'll wear trunks around the drum which is not the thing to do you know it's 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 a way of of being humble, you know, but <laughs> if it's a hot day, it's just like 80, 80, 90 degrees, I'll, I'll cheat and, and I'll, I'll wear trunks, you know, but, you know, one of our teachings is that we, you know, we always wear pants to the drum. And it's just about being humble, you know, you don't want to see the drum looking at you in a certain, looking up at you in a certain way, like especially that angle, you know, and, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't want to see your ashy, your ashy ankles or your ashy knees. So the drum doesn't want to see that neither. So it's just a way of, of being humble. You know, when you when you go to the drum, you know, you try to wear pants or sweats or, you know, to cover your cover your knees and your ankles, and, you know, stuff like that. And, but okay. yeah. That, oh, I was gonna say somebody else asked, how does someone make a song? And what's the oldest song that you know of? Oh the oldest song I know of is my grandmother's song made by my father for his mother. I can't remember it right off, right off the bat. It's the song is like almost 50 years old and it's made for my grandmother. And uh, we sung it only once. I sung it only once in like maybe 10 years. And uh, I sang it in uh, Mille Lacs for my, my dad. And uh, I had my nephews with me and my uncle Ron uh, and uncle Ron with us. And we had a, uh, Little Harv and Brian and, you know, Brian's kids, Skyler and Bryson and, uh, you know, Skywalk and all those guys with us, and the Sugar Bush drum, you know, which he carries. Uh, but yeah, we, that's the oldest song that I know. And uh, our songs are basically come to us in dreams. Uh, as long as come to us in dreams or they're given to us, you know, it's at one time that, you know, from what I remember, it, it's the highest honor that you can be given because the song will live, will basically live forever. Eagle feathers over time will, you know, little mites will bite them, little dust mites or like that, and they'll get thin and they'll, you know, look not too, not too good. But a song will, be, will still be out there, you know, if people remember it and people are still singing it, you know, even as I said before, my brother's song is, is made for him in 2006. It's 16 years later, and there, there are people still singing it for a flag song, which is beautiful. Uh, but yeah, our, our songs come to us in dreams, uh, or else they're given to us. They come to us in dreams, and sometimes you're given a song. You know, as uh, when we started out as Lake Vermilion, we were given songs from Little Otter, uh, from Eric Gobble, and uh, he gave us a few songs. And that's very beautiful because it's a respect. That we were, you know, we wanted to sing our own songs, you know, instead of singing everybody else's. And we did it, we did it the right way. We we asked different groups to if we can sing their songs, give them a little money, a little tobacco, a tape recorder, you know, even though it's supposed to be like our songs are supposed to, you know, be taught like our language orally, you know, no cheating. 
but you know, for us to, to learn correctly, you know, we would get a tape recorder and a little junior, a little money, you know, some tobacco and give somebody a tape recorder, whether it's a little digital recorder or, you know, or, or when we had tape recorders, you know, that's how we give, like, we got permission to sing most of people's songs. <clears throat> and we looked up to everybody else, you know, when we first started, we looked up to the Blackstone and Black Lodge and Whitefish Bay and all those guys. And, uh, we got permission to sing their songs too, even a uh, high noon. And uh, now everybody wants to sing, you know, Young Spirit, you know, the word songs, uh, stuff like that. But yeah, that's basically where, where our songs come from. Our, it comes from our dreams. They're, they're given to us by that way. And as for like, as a Lake Vermillion singer, we have our own, our very own songs. And, uh, but, yeah, it's we're still we're still going strong over thirty years, but that's just basically how our songs come came to came to be come to us, you know whether they're given to us in dreams or they're given to us by somebody else who probably had a dream about it, you know. And so, yeah, that's how the the basics of the songs, the meaning of the drum, uh, the meaning of the drum is is basically the heartbeat of Mother Earth. It came to us from the Dakota people. Uh, it was given to a gift to the people of Red Lake, and from there, it went everywhere. Now, if you, if you know if you know how to make a drum, you can make one your own, and or have somebody. You know, our traditional drums are very different from our Apollo drums. You know, they have the you know if you see on a on a traditional drums that hang in on like four staffs, you'll see the north, east, south, and west, and that's the way those drums are supposed to set up. And uh, everybody has a role around the drum. Nobody, you just don't go to a drum and just sit down and say, okay, well, they already have their, their set singers who sits in the north, who sits in the east, who sits in the south, who sits in the west. And when I sit uh, with the guys from Boys Fort, uh, the traditional drum, I usually sit like in between the, the west and the south. So well, I'm a big guy, so I have to take up like that whole little section there. But yeah, it's uh, we all have a role on a drum. You know, some of us, uh, we start off as gophers, you know, you go for coffee, you go for pop, you know, while everybody else sits around the drum, you know. And we used to sit around a drum and, you know, just in a hot, sweaty weather, you know, because we didn't want to leave grandpa sitting here by ourselves or nobody wanted to get up and go, you know, so we will sit around in the sun nowadays. It's like everybody brings a canopy or, you know, a canopy or a tent, you know, big, big canvas tent that we all sit under so we get older, but... Yeah, uh, well, I'm here to talk about the etiquettes of the drum, you know, to be respectful, uh, uh, try not to go to the drum like under any influence of drugs or alcohol. Uh, that was one of my teachings. I didn't follow it for a long time. And now that I'm older, people are asking me about the teachings of the drum and the meanings of the songs and, you know, to, uh, you know the, the different variety of songs and how they're put together and how you have the lead, the second, and then in the second half, you start the same song again. Then you put in the check beats and then, you know, then the lead again and the second, to the second part of the song. But, uh, so yeah, that's basically what I have to, you know, it's almost quote for us, Gump, that's all I have to say about that. But would you guys like to learn some, like how, learn how to play like the games of the Ojibwe that are, you know, gentle, the gentleman's game, the bear game, originally the moccasin game and the, a game that the women can play too, the hand games. And I'll try to do my best to, to teach you guys the meanings behind this, the, the meanings behind the games and the origins of the games. So would you guys want to like learn about that? Was, or is there any questions about, are we getting any questions about drums or the songs or? Uh, bonjour. Hi. Any more gonna shake to go? Hello? The maid, the maid, them. Okay. gumming, donji. I was just wondering about uh, when you say that women could be involved. Is it the game you call Begayson? Uh, the hand games or the bone game? I think it's the bone game. Yeah. The bone. Yeah, with the little pieces of bone or antlers. 
yeah, I'm going to basically teach you guys the, the origin of that game and the origins of the Moxon game too. So I'm going to do my best to, you know, they're both, they're both played with, with a, with a, with a drum. Uh, it's, it's not, you know, uh, I was told a long time ago that the, the women were the caretakers of our drum because the, the drum came from a woman. So the, the women were the ones that, you know, that took care of our drums, you know, us guys, we, we, we sometimes make mistakes and, you know, it's leave grandpa in the car or leave grandpa, you know, and leave grandpa, you know, at home and, you know, not really take care of them that well, but the women are, are the original keepers of our drums. So I'm going to actually teach you guys about that. Is there any questions about the origins? Uh, is, but yeah, that's uh, the games. They get into the great get right into the games. Well, the original, the, the origin behind the, the Moxon game, it's, it's a gentleman's game. It's played only by the men, but it's weird because, you know, knowledge has to be passed on, you know, and sometimes uh, the, the, the origins of the game get lost. So, you know, I, I'm here just to teach, you know, two styles of, 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 of the games that the Ojibwe play, you know, the hand games, the women can play. I can teach you the rules for that. I can teach you the rules for the Moxon game. I'm not a, really an expert on it. I have been given a, a set, you know, and uh, just to, to wing it and the counting and stuff behind the, the Moxon games. So uh, I'm going to do that. Uh, there are some games I, I do not know, like the dish game uh, that women play. I, I don't know that. Uh, there's a few other games that the Ojibwe women play. Uh, the feather game, I, I do believe it's called. But I, 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 you know, as I said before, I, I just know the rules and the etiquette behind the games that the guys play, and the, the one of the, the the games that the women and the men can play is the hand games. So, which uh, do we have any questions about any any of those, or should we get right to it? I'd love to hear. Oh, go ahead. Oh, uh, I'd love to hear how the Moxon game goes. Well, the Moxon game, as I said before, is a gentleman's game. It's only been played by the men, and there are actually three versions that I've actually heard. the The first version I heard was uh, the Mem Mimikwesi, the little people, gave it to us, and uh, a father had uh, two little boys and a wife. And his wife passed away and uh, his wife got really sick and she passed away. And while the father was out hunting, the boys were outside, you know, playing by the edge, edge of the woods. And they heard a voice like saying, hey, come here, come here, come here, let me show you something. And they're like, uh, no, 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 uh, no, that's okay. You know, and uh, the spirit, spirit kept saying, hey, come, come here, I'll show you a game. I'm, I'm not going to hurt you. And they were like, no, no, that's okay. And after a while, they were like, well, let, let's see what this is about. Let's see what this person is, wants us to, to learn about. So the, the, the Mimigwesi get, uh, showed us that, you know, to hide a stone under a piece of fur. And that's how I was taught. And they, the, the, the Mimigwesi the little people said, as long as this game is played, you know, the earth will continue going. And the, and it's a game of, of peace and quiet and there's no talking, you know, if the game is just for the men and it's played for the men only. And I will show you how to you know the counting and how the game is played and the origins behind that. That's one of the stories. The other story I heard was uh, there was a guy, he was out sick in the woods and somebody, uh, somebody came to him and they were asking him, you okay? Do you need something to eat? And the guy was like, no, I'm okay. And he was depressed. And so the spirit, you know, the, the, the being left and he came back again, like the next day and the guy was still sitting there and the, the spirit, the person asked him, he goes, he goes, you okay? Do you need something to eat? I, I can give you something. I can give you something to eat. Uh, and the guy was like, no, he goes, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, you know, he was depressed and he was sick. Uh, you know, 
the same thing, you know, with depression and stuff like that. And so the next, the next time that the bean came to him again, he goes, he goes, hey, he goes, you okay? And he goes, no, I'm not. He goes, I'm, I'm not. And the bean said, well, can I show you something here? He goes, can I show you something that'll make you feel better? And, and, and the same thing, you know, as long as this game is played, the, the world will keep going. And uh, the, this is an Ojibwe game. <clears throat> and so he pulled out this bundle and he, he, he laid out this, he laid out this bear skin. He laid, laid out this bear skin and then he, he uh, pulled out these, uh, these little marbles. So I don't know where Indians got marbles for the, earlier that time, but we, I don't think we did have marbles a long time ago, but that was the origin, you know, he, and he hit, he, he showed him his game and he had like eight things. He had like eight pieces of, of, uh, of a uh, fur and they were kind of curved and there's a meaning behind that too because that's kind of like a bare footprint the the things and uh so he showed him how to play this game and in the, the rules of the game and so the guy was like so so the bean gave the the guy something to eat you know and uh showed him this game and the guy started getting better and as he walked away he started walking away and he looked back and he saw the guy was standing upright, but he had fur on his legs. And the guy was like, oh, that guy must be really warm. So as, as he walked a little further away, he looked back again. And the guy was on all fours walking. He goes, oh, the guy must be getting tired. So as he walked further away and he looked back and he saw the guy was just walking on all fours and just, he was a bear. And so it was actually really called the, the, the bear game. And, uh, and the same thing with the other story is uh, it's a gentleman's game. And the third story was, you know, besides the little people, the, the bear gave this game to the Ojibwe people. And it's the same, same rules that, you know, as long as this game is played, uh, the world will continue. And it's a gentleman's game and it's played between the, the guys in the, in the families, the guys of the tribe. And uh, <clears throat> I can show you a little bit uh, the, a very, the very basics of the counting and the sticks and the equipment that it takes to play the, the, the moccasin game. Uh, but yeah, that's one of the stories that I was told and uh, we gave it to the Dakota people and there was actually a story between there too, like a hunting party of two Ojibwe people ran into two Dakota people and they were in the same hunting area so, and that, that, that story is where they took off. They didn't have anything, you know, they, they didn't have any, you know, the, the bundles or, you know, they didn't have the bundle, they just had their moccasins. So they, and what they used was uh, bullet casings and one was marked. So that's how the, the, the moccasin game transformed from the bear game to the moccasin games because they used, they took off their moccasins and they played a game. And, you know, the Dakota people say they won the game the Ojibwe people say they they won the game because they invented it, but you know, and it's it's played between both the both tribes, and it's a little different from each 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 tribe that plays it. Uh, and it's the thing is there there's no talking smack, there's no, you know, you you lost, you know, there's always a handshake after the game is over between the winner and the losers, because you know that's 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 one of the rules. And there's, you know, there's hiding, then there's seeking. And, uh, but let's, I'm gonna show you the very basics of the moxin game. Then I'll show you the very basics of <clears throat> the hand game set that the women can play too. And uh, I'll try to teach you guys some of the rules as, as, as we go along about how to, uh, uh, how to play the game and how to correctly play the game. But even that's changed over the hand games, it's changed over the years when I was, when I was taught it and I was given a set, you know, we'd, you'd, you'd hold your hands like this. And when, when you'd hold like a mark one and an unmark one in each hand, and then a person would be, you know, just basically, you know, direct hand signals like this hand, that hand, inside, outside, you know, in outside or because it there'd be two people you know you have two sets and you go left hand or or even like the, the block you know 
like that. You'd block this person, and with this person, you pick that hand, or else you'd block, and you'd pick this hand, but your hand signals would have to be direct and clear. Say, okay, I'm blocking this person, but I'm picking this person. I'm picking you, and I'm picking that hand, whichever the thumb goes. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, if you guess correctly, you'd win the bones or the set, and then it would be your turn uh, to, to hide. And uh, if you guessed incorrectly, you would lose the stick for the hand games. And the hand games would consist of like maybe two people or three people, because you'd have to pick a captain, and the captain would decide, well, you guys are gonna hide, and I'm gonna sing, you know? And even if you don't, like for both very, both the, the hand games and the moxing games, you'd always have a drum and you'd always have a, even if you didn't sing, you'd always have the. That is the traditional beat of both the hand games and the moxing game. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you'd, sometimes during some, some oxen games, you your job in either one of the games would be to distract you distract the guesser from finding you know the, the marked hand or you know the 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 bullet case the marked bullet casing or the stone or the the the, the god's eye for the marbles. So uh, I have the examples of both the games laid out behind me, or actually in front of me, and I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you how to basically play the hand games. The first I'm gonna play the moxing game, teach you the hiding and the rules of that and the equipment. Then we're gonna to go to the hand games, which women can play too. And I, I started teaching this game the hand games because the women can play it and they can sing too and you know they can just have fun that's one of the games that i i, I continues to, to play with you know the the involved the females and uh they they always have fun and when they sing they can sing anything they want and you know, they'll sing and even though it's kind of against the rules you know rap songs or you know the modern day songs and you know and i've seen the guys sing you know itty bitty spider and baby shark just to distract the guessers and how the game has changed and even having more fun like that. But when I was when I was taught, you always have your hands like this, but nowadays everybody's like, you know, dabbing and going crazy with their hands. And you know, I was like trying to find the marked object then when they're like, okay, pick one now. It's like, uh, that isn't how I was taught how to play this <laughs> yeah but then it's still the same thing you know left hand right hand inside outside block you know whatever and uh but those are the basic the, for the hand games moxing game is a little bit harder because you'd have like a, a stick and then you would boom you know that's how you goes here when you hear that moxing game you hear that picking, trying to pick where the, where the marked object where you get slap. And when you do that, that is your choice. There's no, oh, I wasn't, no, I wasn't thinking that one. And you'd always be like little hand signals with their, with their guesser and, and the person that's watching the marbles, they'd be like, okay, it's under these ones, you know, these ones, or, you know, they try to hide their hands like this. Oh, it's, you know, we move their finger. Like, oh, it's this one, or which one is that? They, they talk, but they wouldn't talk, you know, smack to the other team, like, you suck, you're gonna lose. No, it's they talking about themselves, like, okay, well, which one is it? They wouldn't say anything, they point towards their fingers, you know, like, oh, the, the marked object is right, you know. They wouldn't show their team that just, you know, use their fingers. But uh, let's, uh, I'm gonna move the camera here a little bit, and we're gonna get to the game. The boxing game. I'm going to do a little hiding, and then uh, show you the very basics of of the of the sticks of the games. We're kind of running out of time here, and I really get really just have fun explaining the, the rules. And, uh, and sorry about that, but let's try to see if we can get to the game. So I'm going to move this here a little bit. Right. 
to where we're going. Can you see that? Can everybody see that? Do you want to angle it down a little bit? Maybe? Yeah, okay. To the left, maybe? Yeah. Right there? Right there? Yeah. Perfect? Good to me. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you can see me still here, oops. So what we do is, um, down here. All right, so what would you do is, uh, you know, somebody would, there'd always be a hand drum. And I always have a singer. You'd have your 20 sticks, you know, they'd be marked for this team. And those would sometimes represent arrows. Then on this side over here, you would have the same thing. 20 sticks. Did I wrap this up too? 26. And then there would be a, another board. Like up here, there would be like uh, like like um, that we call soldiers. There would be like a, a peg, a board here with like nine different with nine different like little pegs. And one of the one, the middle peg would be a little bit color different. See, I would have green and blue on one pegs for the four pegs. Then on the other peg, I would have like blue and red. And there would be four pegs like that. But the fifth peg would be a little different. And uh, so, so, okay, so and here's our objects. Well, these aren't exactly, I don't have any marbles or, or, uh, or bullet casings. See if I can get the little thing open here. Yeah, here's the other thing. So, but if you'd actually look, if you could actually see that, one of the objects is different. Does that have like three pennies? Three pennies and a dime because a dime is close to like pennies without any variance. So, or else I would just have one of the other pennies marked. <coughs> and say I was, uh, it was my turn to hide. So I would use my best, you know, sit down like this and then I'd, you know, go like this and press, you know, one of the items, you know, one of the items under here. And I go like that. And the other side with these big things, you know, because you they'd each be, you know, each set set would be, you know, if he was like, say, okay, well, we'd have the highs and the lows. The first. Your first guess would be anywhere between, would be like, cost you like eight sticks. The second time would be six. The fourth time would be four. Then if they guessed it, say, say the guy was like, okay, well, he went like that. Then he tapped this and the guy would reach under it. And if he, nope, that's a, that's a penny. That's not the marked one. So he would lose eight sticks. So say, okay, so say he, the second guess was here. So the guy would reach under and you put the, the, if it was a marked object, you would put it up on the thing so you wouldn't know where it was. So then it would come down to this right here. So then the guy would like, so say he just went, nope. So the guy would go, Throw it up there. Then you reach under, pull up the marked object. Then in just that set, he lost eight, six, four, 18 of his sticks. And when he'd lose 20 of them, that's when they'd put a peg in the in the, one of the nine spots to say that they won they won eight game and they would play the five games. So, you know, and then there'd be hunting they would hide again and the same thing with the 
the things, those the highs and the lows, the outside or the insides. The first one, he, 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 if, he, if he lost again, then he loses 20 sticks, then he'd get another peg and it would play to five games. And after the game was over, they would shake their hands. And uh, and even now, you know, on this side after where they're hiding, you'd be, you know, you have that. Have that, that kind of sidestep beat for the moccasin games. And I've seen places where you, they'd even have dancers in the back, like jingle disc dancers. And they'd have guys with, with, you know, the rattles. And those would be to distract the guys from, from picking, which would be the hider or the, the hunter, you know, the guys who's, who's gonna pick and he would pick with the big stick. So that is the very basics of that. So, all right. That is the very basics of the boxing game. So let's switch it around here. Switch around the camera and go to the hand games. Can you see that? Anybody there? Yeah, I can um, a little down or yeah, that's good. Is that good? Yeah. So this game is basically it's a little it's a little different. It's a little uh, it, we don't play to ten. We don't play to ten. We play to five. A coin toss would determine who would get the kick stick, the final stick, and we'd only play to five. But then you have two people, so you could lose like two sticks at a time, and it'd always be a judge. You know, the people would be kneeling down. Or this game, they they, they sit in chairs now, and which is a lot better for you know older guys. So, but yeah, you would hide. If I can get down here without too much cracking. So, okay. So, all right. Let's go. All right. Okay. So, here's what I would do. So, say if I had two people here or three people, you know, it can be played with two people, but you'd have a certain things right there. And one of the objects, two of the objects would be marked. If you look carefully, you see, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's definitely markings there. So say there's one set, take them up, get them in my hand, or then I hold them out, you know, hold them out, and then I'd have somebody singing. And then if they pick this hand, like with the, well, as I showed before, they, they went like that. But on the other side, they pick this hand. So I would go, nope, stick. They lose a the stick. If they guessed right, uh, then I'd have to throw them over, you know, or hand them over to be respectfully. You know, even if I, if I lose a stick, I would, you know, hand it over. I wouldn't, you know, be disrespectful. And the thing with this game, too, is there's no talking. There's no talking in this game, you know, and if you win, you, you only play to five. So you, you'd want to be careful about how you picked. You know, you'd only play to five. If you had the kicker stick, you'd play to six. But this game is can be played by the men and the women. And the women just have fun during this song because they can sing whatever they want. And, but that is the meaning behind the very basic concept of the moxin game and the hand games or the bone game. So is there any questions out there since I'm stuck like this now? <laughs> so as soon as the video's over, you're gonna hear me grunt and my knees crack, my back crack, and my hips crack. But yeah, you know, this during this part, you know, it, it's just like the moxing game. You have to, you know. So you would need a minimum of three people to play because you would need somebody to drum and then two people yeah. to play. Yeah, two people to hide. So, and, and you can have like the minimum of three, you can have like a whole bunch of people and, you know, can bring your rattles and stuff like that. And, but this is another game that can be played. It's the same concept, you know, you play over a blanket or even a table now, nowadays. It, but you would play over a blanket, you'd have like three chairs on this side 
you have a few chairs on this side, you'd have somebody, you know, some person would be sitting here. And, but the drum is an important part of both games. You'd always have to have a drum. You'd always have to have a drum beat. And then, you know, well, these guys are high. I'd be singing. So. And then if you lose, you know, if you guess incorrectly, you'd lose the stick. You guess correctly, you win the set, and it would be your turn to hide. You know, the hand drum would be passed off there. The captain would decide who's going to hide and who's going to sing. And uh, I, I kind of like this game better, a little bit better than that game, the Moxon game or, you know, the Bear game, because the girls can play this game too. And it's a lot funner that way. You know, when they get to play, they get to have fun too. And uh, there's no talking smack, as I said before. It's just all just in the name of fun. And I've seen some places where they've actually had money for this stuff. You know, uh, in Skmitsin, when, when it was a big powwow, and in 2007, I saw one group from Oklahoma. Is it? And they went. Is it, is it okay if the girls sing that song? Yeah, uh, at this at this type of game, yes. You know, during this this game, as long as they weren't you know on their time, you know, because that's another teachings, one of our teachings that you know the women can have hand drums and sing with hand drums, but you know, when, when, it, when it comes time to the, the you know their moon. They have to put away their 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 sacred items, you know, whether their pipe carrier, their drums, or their eagle feathers, or their medicines. But yeah, the girls can can sing. Just you know, I've seen some places where girls are just making guys look bad because they'd be too bashful to even sing. And girls like, give me that. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And, uh, and it's a fun me game. Gwetch. Me gwetch. Me <laughs> gwetch. Yeah. So you know, I I I, I like to thank KBFT and Boys for for in, inviting me to. You know, teach a little bit more about, you know, to have fun in a, with, a, with our Ojibwe games. And, 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 and for both people, you know, the, the females and the males, the girls, the boys, to play this game and just have fun. That's what it's about. And I've seen sometimes where people would sit down and they would throw money in the pot, like the, the players, would like throw money in the middle, and that's what they would play for. And I was like, oh, okay. I, I taught this game in Fargo at one time. And, uh, and uh, this lady come up and she's holding her baby. And, she, you know, and, and, and when you sit down, you throw your money, you know, on the blanket. And she, she sat down and she was like, I want to learn how to play. And I said, like, okay, sit down. She puts her baby like, like right on the blanket. And I was like, I'm like uh, I looked at her just like, are we playing for that? Goes, hey. <laughs> what do you mean? He's a beacon to go. Yeah. Yeah. and So yeah, it was so, crazy. She didn't understand, like, you know, once you put the put your what whatever you're on it, you'd put it there and she put her big like it. I was like, oh, okay. Must be confident you're gonna win this game because you just put your baby in. Put your baby on the. Well, that's that's another teaching there. You're not supposed to dance with your baby in a power ground. See? Yeah, you know that's the thing. Where you know all, all our children are considered gifts, and we we don't when we when we do that. There's meanings behind that that you know you're giving your baby back. You know you give baby up, and uh, that's that's a totally different you know aspect of of even our power life. Well, you don't put your baby down for gambling, eh? Yeah. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> down, you're down a blanket. And I was like, uh, no, no. <laughs> but when I, when I teach these for the kids, I make sure everybody has fun. You know, I don't, I don't put money up for, for, the, for the games. I put like dominoes and like, like Swedish fish and chocolate and candy and for, for the winners and the losers, you know, the winners get a bigger bag of candy, but the losers still get a bag of candy or dominoes or, you know, the big things of Cheetos, you know, the, the big plastic barrel of Cheetos. And, you know, everybody gets something to win. But yeah. Sounds like it's a lot of fun, Terry. 
hopefully yeah, like I, once COVID's like not as serious or it's it's safer for us to gather, then maybe we'd be able to play this in person. Yeah. It, uh, but yeah, those are the basic rules of the games. Um, you'd have three people minimum. You'd have your your singer, your hiders, you, and your guessers on that side. You know, somebody would, you'd, the captain would pick who's going to guess. And, you know, and after a while, it's like, wow, you're a real bad guesser, especially if they lose. You know, wow, you had five times. You couldn't even win. You couldn't even win, win. Yeah. Well, let's play again. And then they pick somebody else and they're like, oh, you, you're bad at guessing, aren't you? Because it's just like, you know, a 50-50 chance, you know, mm -hmm. to pick the, pick the marked object. And it's like, wow, you're really bad at guessing. And it's just a wonderful time, you know, especially when, you know, they see their faces light up, you know, it's like, like, okay, here's for the winners. And then, you know, see the other team like, oh, man, you just, man. You just killed it for us. It, you know, you hear them say, but then okay, here's something for here's something for you guys too. And like, oh, we get we get stuff too. It's like, yeah. You know, that's what this game is all about. It's just it's all about fun. Mm. It's all, you know, it's it's there's no talk smacking between the teams, you know, you be respectful when you pass it the Oh me gwetch. You did so well with the teachings. Well, I'd like to thank you guys for listening and also KBFT and also Boys for for inviting me to show you guys a little bit of, of to have fun again. You know, I wish we could, but, you know, during the, the Omniprint variant and also the Delta variant and COVID-19, it's hard for us to get together even now. You mm -hmm. know, and asking if Gene Goodsky or Uncle Gene, you know, I, I don't know how we're going to you know do, do his funeral, you know, how we're going to actually get together to do that. But that's up to Diana and uh, Kurt and Ashley to kind of figure that out. But I just wish those guys good luck. You know, I know it's hard. It's hard to lose a father, you know, and it's hard to you know even lose a mother, a parent. You know, my you know, condolences. And then there are. Thank, thank you so much for thank the teachings. Say, yeah. Well, thank you, Terry, for joining us, and thank you guys all for spending your evening with us. If you guys have any questions for Terry or any things or you want to get connected with him, you guys can send me an email. Um, Terry, did you want to give a shout out to your, maybe your social media or your radio station or something like that? Where people oh, can find well, you? my radio is a KBFT 89.9 FM, Niji Radio, N-I-I-J-I-I, -I -I, radio.com, radio.org. I'm on Monday through Friday, 6 to 10 a.m. Central Time. I play a variety of music and tell bad jokes, you know. We don't we don't have enough of that in a world. We don't have enough laughter. And at this at this junk, uh, we need we need to laugh. We need to have fun. Mm. And that's what we try to do. Uh, but, and uh, but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm on Monday Friday and I just I just play a variety of music. I play country music, I play pop music. I play old school music, classic rock and roll, heavy metal, pop music, soul music, and and I tell bad jokes. You know, once in a while you you'll hear me tell a, you know, the old school bad joke about but uh, you know, what do you call a man with one leg longer than the other? Oh, I didn't even get a reply. Not even. <laughs> you know, but. Uh, Terry, there's a question here from Shane. Okay. And did you want to unmute? Sure. Uh, uh, yes, but I thought I was going to say is uh, she me watch Terry for the uh, teachings and uh, me and my kids were um, having dinner and, and listening to you, you uh, share your teachings and also um, she me watch to uh, Peyton and the uh, program that uh, put this uh, this uh, program on. Thank you. She me watch. Thank you, Terry. All right. Thank you, Shane. All right. Good stuff.